Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Military. Today we're going to be looking at the Soviet RPG-43, which was a World War II invention, which actually saw quite a bit of use after World War II as well. Um, and I actually have done a video on these before, but these are some a uh, little bit better examples to look at, including a factory cutaway. So we'll just take a, a little bit of a more deep dive into how this pretty interesting grenade works. There doesn't seem to be a lot of information out there that sort of illustrates the, how these were uh, deployed, and they're pretty iconic from World War II, so let's take a look at these. Uh, all five of these are actually uh, post-war Polish training examples. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one. This is a standard RPG-43, but it's got a rubber head, uh, and that's a rubber-weighted head to simulate the sort of the, the weight of a fully loaded grenade, because these were pretty heavy. They weighed about two and a half pounds, uh, with about, I think, over a pound of that being explosive. And as you can see, this is actually marked in Polish, and this means training. And the other examples of these are going to be marked. You know what? I'm not even going to try and pronounce that because I don't speak Polish. And all I can tell you is I know it means school. So like, uh, you know, a military training classroom, a classroom example to be shown, shown to troops and recruits and whatnot. I am not sure if this used any kind of... Uh, smoke detonating charge to show where it hit or anything it does have this kind of head here I don't think it had any little black powder charge maybe or anything like that in it I'm, I'm really not sure if you know anything about these uh, you know chime in I'd love to know but uh, you don't see a lot of these they're they're kind of unusual uh, this is just another example of one just got RPG 43s floating all over the place here and this one again, mark training. It's a little bit different in that the cone is black, this cone is green. I don't think that means a lot. And uh, both of these would be standard RPG 43s as they would have been deployed in the Polish military, uh, minus these markings, obviously. But you've got your instructions for use here. And obviously, another great way to tell they're Polish is all the instructions are in Polish. Uh, as a side note, uh, a while back I saw one of these come up for sale from a pretty large online retailer of you know unusual and rare militaria. I'm not going to name names here, but they had one of these and they identified it as a Soviet World War II one, even though everything was in Polish. And if you're going to sell one, please identify the right country it's from kind of gives you some credibility there. Anyways, uh, jumping into sort of what the deployment method of these were is pretty interesting. They're pretty complicated and yet simple. And in my opinion, incredibly gutsy to use. So you've got this really, really heavy grenade and it weighs, like I said, almost three pounds fully loaded. So you really can't throw it super far. It had about half the range of a typical uh, hand-thrown grenade uh, during World War II and after too. Um, so first thing you're going to do is pull this safety pin here. And when you do that, uh, this handle right here is going to want to fly off. And I've actually pulled the pin on a couple of these they're inert, don't worry. Uh, you pull the pin and you get quite a shock of this whole thing wants to just fly off. So you gotta hold it tight and then you throw it. And what happens then is this cone, this outer cone here, uh, which you can see there's sort of this inner cone and this outer cone. This part will actually uh, sort of come down the wood stick part here as it's in the air and that will fly off and it will deploy these cloth fins which then come flying out and normally this would be connected to this this is just a factory cutaway so obviously the threading is not there and it likes to come off uh, so these will actually uh, fly out 
to stabilize the head in flight. And you've got this whole contraption flying through the air uh, with trailing its cloth fins, which are meant to keep the shaped charge at a 90 degree angle or as close as possible of a 90 degree angle to the armor that you're gonna be wanting to throw this at. So what happens is the second this hits a hard surface, be it armor or the ground, it detonates. There is no time delay, there's nothing like that. It hits and it detonates. And what it does is this chamber here, uh, the shape charge, this all this yellow would be the explosive. This detonator hits and spring activated and it goes off and it focuses your shape charge th into a very tiny point on the tank armor and it's going to punch through that tank armor and it's basically a molten jet of melted metal and explosive force that's going to come through that and hopefully uh, either destroy the crew or an ammunition rack or sensitive components in the tank and basically disable the tank. So obviously to use one of these, you had to be pretty close to the tank and you would take it, throw it, hope you got about 90 degrees uh, hit on the armor and you hope it would go through. Uh, these did see use, like I said, in World War II starting in about 1943. They continued in use, uh, certainly all the way up to, I know they were used in the Yom Kippur War, so what is that, about 1973? And I wouldn't be surprised if their days are, you know, not completely done on the battlefield. I can't say that they're uh, standard use anywhere right now, but they definitely probably show up in a lot of sort of third world type battles. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot still left in the Middle East. They're probably being used in Syria, uh, Yemen, who knows, maybe they're even being used in the Ukraine currently. But just wanted to take a look at these pretty interesting grenades. These are pretty unusual. You don't see a lot of these floating around and they are a pretty iconic uh, World War II example of a Soviet grenade. And the Soviets did then improve it into other um, iterations of stick grenades. And we'll take a look at some of those later. Uh, definitely got some nice examples uh, to look at. And uh, remember, if you do come across one of these and you're contemplating buying it, always look at that label if it has it to know sort of what country it's from the other thing to always look at that always helps uh, this is a dead giveaway that says rpg 43 and those are not in cyrillic characters obviously if that was a soviet example that would not be in uh the, or it would be in cyrillic uh, characters so thanks for taking a look and uh, as always remember to like and subscribe and uh, we'll always be doing more interesting videos for you. Thanks for watching.